All right, a very good morning to you, and thank you so much for keeping it NBS Television. You are watching The Morning Breeze, and welcome to the topical discussion. And this morning, as Ali Aaron promised, I do have the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, to let us in on what is happening with the economy. Because the last time I did host him, we were crying, Paul, about a number of things. Have those changed? Allow me to say a very good morning to you, and thank you so much for making time for us once again. Thank you. Good morning. Good Mildred morning to and you. And everybody. The last time you were here, the biggest concern was about the fluctuation in the dollar rate. Are we stabilizing? Oh, yeah. The, the, you are the people in the market <laughs> there. I don't know what you are seeing. What I see on my side is that uh, we, are, we are plateauing from the shock that we, we had experienced. Mm. I told you it's a temporary shock. And uh, since then, although still uh, somewhat higher than the rate at which the foreign exchange was then, it has now reduced a okay. bit to about to, uh, 3,885. That's uh, uh, what it closed on yesterday. And uh, it has been uh, relatively stable. The, the, the main thing in the foreign exchange is about stability. Yeah. That we want to avoid a lot of volatility, and it has so far stabilized. Okay, that's good news, especially for those who are trading in foreign currency. Mm -hmm. You also just recently released the economic performance report for February mm -hmm. 2024. Let's look at the key issues in there mm -hmm. and how they do affect the economy directly. Yes, the first issue is the actually the fact that perception amongst business owners, business executives have improved. They are, they are now sure that uh, the economy has stabilized, has recovered, mm -hmm. because a number of uh, indices are used to, to measure the perception, what people feel about, about the economy, especially those who are managing business. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in most cases, people who comment about the economy are not in the business. <laughs> but those who are in the business, Aspiring the business, businessmen, anyway. yes, executives, have indicated when you look at the business tendency index, which we compile every quarter, it's above 50. And uh, uh, although it's slightly reduced to about 58, it is still very high. And that shows you that uh, uh, the business executives are confident that um, uh, their, their businesses are likely to perform well. Also, uh, when you look at uh, the level at which we are purchasing, uh, especially stock, uh, people accumulating inventory, mm. it is also uh, quite high, it, it, it increased. Actually, when you look at the real uh, numbers, uh, for example, we see that uh, there has been a continued expansion in the private sector activity, and uh, this is driven by mainly increase in new orders the private sector is getting more new orders for, for, for whatever they are selling. There is also higher output among our manufacturing firms and a rise in staffing levels. They are also mm -hmm. even employing more, more people. They employed more people in February than they did in December and January. We have also seen um, inflation remaining uh, below the target rate, although it slightly increased from 2.8% in uh, January to 3.4% in uh, February. We have seen, um, we have already talked about the shilling. It depreciated uh, uh, at around 1.8%, but it has since uh, also uh, stabilized. The yield uh, curve is also stable, the interest rates at which government is borrowing, but also the lending rates. Although they slightly increased, they are still within the range uh, 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 at which people can afford to borrow money. Uganda has also seen the trade deficit reducing. Mm. Mm. And the Where do we stand? This is now the imports minus the exports. That uh, deficit had, uh, had gone up, but now it reduced, and uh, the number I have, it reduced by 30% in, 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 in February from $270 million to $188 million. And this has resulted 
from a decline in import bill. We are now importing less uh, than we imported in uh, December. Oh, is it because in February we had the fluctuation of the dollar, so it, the goods were more expensive bringing in than they were actually yes, selling out? Yes, we, we actually, you know, whenever the exchange rate depreciates, mm. it's actually sometimes good for a country which has commodities to export because you export more, um, because now they have become relatively cheaper for mm. the foreigners. Indeed, mm. in February we exported more than we imported, okay. and uh, that uh, somewhat e uh, offset the... The, the, the deficit which are the, uh, enlarged in January. Also, um, we see that within East Africa, we are now a, a net exporter. We exported over and above what we imported amongst our peers of about 81 million US dollars. And we registered uh, some good performance in the external sector as a result of that. But also on the negative side, we had a revenue shortfall of about 148 billion shillings. We, we collected less than what we had targeted in February. And it, that, uh, that is really understandable because when uh, uh, people import less, especially our customs, they, it, uh, they oh. haven't been uh, performing well. Uh, since the beginning of the financial year. Okay. Uh, but, but, but that is not a big problem. As long as we now produce more locally because we have been substituting and also we are exporting more in the region. That's okay. not a big, a big challenge. Very good performance. On, um, you would say that the weighing scale on the positive is much higher yes. than the, the, the negative side. Absolutely. But two very key important aspects that come through. You talk about inflation, and there is about a 0.7% increase, mm. whereas it's still below the threshold. Yes. That is a point of concern for anyone because you would at least want to either keep it at bay mm. or keep it reducing. What could have been attributed to that, even as light as it is, mm. the slight increase, in the inflation by 0.7%? The foreign exchange depreciation. Okay. It is a pass-through effect. When uh, the dollar rate increases, uh, of course we shall import at relatively higher price. Mm. And as a result of that, the also the final price which the consumers pay will slightly increase. So we see that core inflation is the one which drove mainly the headline inflation, which led to the increase, especially the prices of fuel and energy mm. and uh, all these fast-moving goods which are imported, they, there was a slight increase uh, in them because of the, the dollar. Another out of the performance indices is the, our trade deficit, you know, mm. closing in a mm. little bit. And um, I would, s probably someone would be asking, what exactly are we doing and how are we going to enhance it to make sure that we can maintain that performance? And also when we talk about having performed much better than our, uh, than our counterparts on the East African region, what are we doing right? What do we need to maintain as a country? Hmm. What we are doing right is value addition. We've invested heavily in value addition in the recent decades. Oh, I should say past decade. Really, uh, Uganda is changing in terms of the contribution of manufacturing and the industrial uh, uh, produce on our, in our basket, on our GDP. And the government policy now is really focused on industrial policy. Yeah. We need to, to put in more effort in supporting our local producers than importers. You know, sometimes people uh, want us to support their businesses which are importing mm. at the expense of those who are trying to establish industry here. Um, good economics and all those countries we admire where we go to purchase these goods and we bring them here in China, uh, from India, uh, from Europe, from the US. They used industrial policy when they were growing. They supported their local producers. They subsidized the electricity. They, 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 they gave them cheaper money. They gave them free land. They, uh, they picked winners, as they, as they call mm -hmm. it. You know, some, some time back, it was uh, obscene to say, I'm going to pick winners as government. World Bank, IMF had told us, don't pick winners. You leave the, the economy on its own. 
Uh, but uh, they have also moved on since then. They are actually supporting us to pick winners, to ensure that we support local producers. And I want to assure Ugandans that we are going now even to come in bigger ways mm. in supporting our local producers to add value to the raw materials that we have now in plenty, mm -hmm. agricultural raw materials, minerals, but also in the service sector, like a tourism, so that we can be able to sell more goods out and more services and earn the dollar. Then that's when the exchange rate will reduce. That's when uh, the interest rates at which we want to borrow will reduce because people will now be saving more uh, on longer term. And also that's when incomes of people will stabilize and increase and, and, and people will stop uh, now crying of economy. Mm -hmm. as, as sometimes they, 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 they tell me, some younger people they say, uh, you, you know, Ram, you, you, you said this is economics which works, but the economy is killing us. <laughs> economy will get better mm. when we add value to what we are producing, okay. but not when we uh, go and import more phones, more textiles, more juices, and so on from elsewhere. You are making the other economy, richer. you know, richer. Okay. So we want to make ours. What, bit. what are our biggest um, tax earners as a country? And the reason I'm asking is because if we have a deficit of 148 billion, and partly we are attributing that to Imports. you know customs, mm -hmm. because now we're not importing a lot more, so mm -hmm. we cannot be able to charge people. That creates a sort of an imbalance, mm -hmm. especially where we're preparing for a number of things. You have census, you have elections, you have this, a lot that is coming up, mm -hmm. and yet we are also striving as much as possible to reduce on how much we get to borrow each and every other time. Mm. Uh, in Uganda, the main contributor to our tax revenue are the imported items, petroleum products. This fuel we import, plus also the cars, they are the number one items on which we spend our money. Mm. We're importing the cars and the spare parts and then the fuel to, to power them. Um, then we have also industrial, what we call intermediate goods, chemicals, um, this machinery to set up industry. For me, when I look at our basket now, we are importing, I'm getting happier now because it's mainly those goods we can't produce now, mm -hmm. like uh, cars and fuel, and then goods which we need to also industrialize, the intermediate goods. Because in a globalized world, you are not encouraged to produce everything. Mm. You concentrate <laughs> on what you can manage, import the other parts, and then you put together an item. So our industry has grown that now the intermediate goods, those goods which are required like machinery and plant to set up a Jewish factory. Mm. Those are now the ones we see uh, people importing in big chunks. And then uh, also we have of course these other gen textiles because we are now spending uh, something upwards of $400 million on textiles. Mm. Uh, this fabric we are putting on, they are mainly imported. It, our textile industry is still infant, and uh, there's also a conversation in town on uh, how people uh, have been uh, quarreling. The other weekend, I was meeting traders mm. who had uh, uh, said that you, uh, if you, I think, under Casita, the Kampala City Traders Association, sure. they were saying there is this tax which we imp we imposed on uh, imported textile especially mm. fabric, which is used by, by people. That you're taxing them in kilograms in now. In kilograms. So they have to buy substandard material, which doesn't yes. weigh as 3. much. $3.5 dollars per kilo. Okay. That's what you are a charges on imported fabric. They are saying this is unfair tax because it is where in East Africa, the common external tariff is 35 maximum. 35%. Why do you add on this $3.5 per kilo? And uh, we listened to them. I've been listening to them. I listened to them. I 
I have uh, briefed the, His Excellency the President and my minister oh. and uh, other leaders. And uh, even uh, this last week, actually this week, not last week, this last Monday and Tuesday were in the cabinet discussing uh, the budget, which uh, my minister is going to, to lay uh, in parliament today. And uh, this matter came up. And, 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 and we are discussing it. I want to assure the traders that we shall get, a, of course, a lasting co solution. In Uganda, we always get a solution to, to the issues we have. But this tax was put there to protect the textile industry in Uganda hmm. to grow. But now we need to make a balance, to strike a balance between also not to kill off these SMEs that have been uh, using the imported fabric. Because we haven't grown our own. Like uh, the mm. Chikubo, uh, Chiembe, actually. Mm. It's mm. called the Chiembe. Chiembe yes. I don't know whether Chiembe is still there. It has <laughs> it been a while uh, since I passed there. But I think they are, th those ladies and gentlemen are still there making very nice uh, clothes out of uh, this imported fabric. We want to continue to see how do we nurture them. Uh, but at the same time, we encourage them to move more towards buying from our own because okay. we have now some established industries, but also we have attracted more. The, about two to three years from now, you will see big investment in textile sector. All right. That, the reason why I asked that, and thank God you brought in the meeting with Casita, is, is this deficit of tax. Yes. And yet we are looking at increasing, uh, you know, growing our tax. Oh, yes. Our tax. What, what are the plans that we are having with regard to not slump back, but be able to continuously increase, at least stagnate or continuously increase, our circle budget being mm. able to get the money that we, we, we need. We need just to cater for one thing, fairness in taxation. And let every Ugandan pay the little they are supposed to pay. We shall get more money than actually squeezing a few people who are, who are already compliant. So what we are now targeting, and URA is moving really uh, quite well, is the automation, the digitization of uh, the payment system. Uh, the, there is a system called the IFRIS. The Electronic like, Fiscal score receipting and yes. invoicing system. What's the performance of that? A very nice performance. It's growing revenue uh, every day. And it is a, it's a good system for everybody. Because bring fairness, if you have sold something, don't hide, pay the little you are supposed to pay, like everybody else. But now, some businesses have been taking advantage of others. Somebody else is paying tax because it's automated. The other one is not paying, is selling off a vehicle or if in the shop but is not receipting. And uh, as a result of that, is not returning uh, the tax to URA. So you make the one who's paying to be on a disadvantage and being taken advantage of by this one who's not paying. That's why you have seen some businesses collapsing while others are flourishing in the same. So IFRIS is now bringing that equality and equitable uh, 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 taxation. And uh, we hope that this is something Ugandans will support actually fully so that the, we the can- The traders uh, seem to be a little bit cagey about IFRIS in itself. Is it an aspect of understanding? Is it an aspect of education about it? They don't seem very comfortable. No, they don't want to pay. They haven't been paying. Now this is a, it's like a camera, putting a camera, a CCTV camera, at a point where someone was sneaking out. You would be uncomfortable with that camera. But the camera is not the problem. The camera is actually bringing transparency. So this IFRIS is bringing transparency in the tax system such that everybody who has been playing games, I, I asked the traders there that please work with the URA so that there is a fairness in taxation. Everybody will be paying little and eventually we shall get more revenue and the government will not squeeze anyone out of business. Mm. But when you try to hide, and actually that's when you invite URA to audit you, and I've always told the people, never invite government in your business, into your business. And the only way you can avoid inviting government is by complying and you pay the tax you are supposed to pay. 
But when you try to hide, and you, let me tell you, you can't hide away from the state all of the time. The state will get you. And once they, we get you, we audit you, we penalize you, we, we are now very suspicious of you, we are always auditing you, we are always on, on the lookout, that's when you will fail to do business. So the best thing to do, enroll on a freeze, the same with the rental tax, mm. Ensure that you, 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 you pay your rental tax. They, they, I understand they, some of the landlords who are watching me now, they know what I'm talking about. They give uh, their tenants different receipts, uh, receipts indicating different figures from what they have received. And now these tenants are also saying, but really, why should I continue in this game? And we encourage them as government to come forward and uh, work with us. We are really going to be so harsh on those who are trying to evade the tax because they are the ones who make us to increase taxes in areas where we shouldn't, but also to borrow money, which we shouldn't be borrowing, or to fail to fix some of the things which we need to make the economy function, like electricity, the good roads, um, uh, and, and all other sorts of infrastructure. So rental, income tax, and the uh, sales tax, which we are targeting through IFRIS, they are fundamental areas we are going to close, plus VAT, VAT, value added tax. We are going to be pursuing those windows to ensure that we close these gaps. Maybe the shortly area. before we take a break, another twin of IFRIS that was introduced literally at the same time are the digital tax yes. stamps. Yes. And uh, we started basically with the commodities mm. mainly. Mm. Are we expanding that bracket to ensure that we can be able to encompass many other? They are mainly for, for those who are producing goods uh, in, in, in industry. It has worked well. Uh, for example, in the beverages, mm. now we know for sure uh, how much is produced and, uh, and the value, and uh, they are paying their due tax. So we shall definitely be put. In other words, what I should say is that we are going to digitize the entire tax system to ensure that now the computers help us to eliminate evasion and avoidance and everybody pays their due tax, and as a result of that, we shall make uh, Ugandans to pay less tax per head, but at the end of the day, we collect more revenue okay. than now having fewer Ugandans and others don't pay. All right, thank you very much, um, Mr. Ramadan Govi. We'll be taking a very short commercial break, but when we do return, of course, I know there are lots of conversations coming through with regard to the budget, and uh, what our plan is, wha where we are currently, and what we should be looking forward to. That and much more when we do it. Welcome back. Thank you for keeping it NBS Television. You're still watching The Morning Breeze, your most authoritative morning current affairs show. This is a topical discussion. And as always, I always tell you that on Thursday, our conversations are differed in the economy or economy or whatever you would like to call it, but issues that, I, uh, that will directly affect your pocket and even your standard of living sometimes. And with me is the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, giving us an update of the performance that we have so far as we are. As we did take a break, the conversations were about the performance that we've had. But right now, uh, every discussion is about budget preparation. Mm -hmm. What is the need for the Ugandan? What are we planning for? What are our budget priorities, first of all, for the next financial year, 24-25? We are taking a very good budget to Parliament. Mm. This afternoon, my minister will be laying it before Parliament. And uh, as you know, our budget process is very transparent, very consultative. Ugandans know all the priorities they put in there. We are basically talking about seven things that we are trying to target uh, this year, uh -huh. this coming year, 24-25. Number one being the in more investment in the money-making activities. Okay. We are going to put more money in areas that are creating wealth 
especially value addition and wealth creation as well as job creation. I'm talking about my investment in a UDB to support our manufacturers, uh, capitalization of UDC to continue with the industrial policy. I'm talking about going ahead with our PDM, parish development model. We are maintaining the 1.1 trillion shillings there. I'm talking about the money which we have been giving to women <coughs> entrepreneurs, to youth, to ensure that they can uh, do business. They mioga for our market people and uh, those in the garages and so on. But also tourism development. Mm -hmm. uh, then the people in uh, the new economy, the science ec based economy, mm -hmm. those who are innovators. Um, I want to tell Ugandans actually, if you want to tap into government opportunities going forward, enter those areas of uh, STI, science, technology, and innovation. Mm -hmm. Scientists are going to be uh, supported uh, quite well going forward. We are a bit constrained now. We, we cannot, uh, I shouldn't promise that we shall be chunking out a lot of support, but going because forward. Because if it all go there, and then you don't have yes, the money. Yes, as we get the fiscal space back, which we are working on now, we are going to be now shifting more resources in that area because now we are working on uh, growing the economy tenfold. There is a strategy which the minister is going to present alongside the budget for next year. How do we grow the economy tenfold in the next 15 years? By 2040, we want the GDP of Uganda to jump to half a trillion dollars, 500 billion. I know in Uganda we don't believe what we haven't touched. I know in Uganda we have a lot of doubting Thomases. When you, you dream big, people are like, uh, that's not possible. Sometimes based on experience and what uh -huh. we've seen. Now experiences change, cultures change. Uh, it's all about the belief. And the, I want to tell you that, and also strategy, but also the discipline, execution discipline. Mm. Those are the things we are. We have a good strategy now in place. We presented it to cabinet, cabinet approved it. We are going now to present it to parliament. And after that, we shall take it all over the country to the people in local governments, all councils we will present this strategy in our uh, uh, civil society, our private sector. Mm. We would want everybody to get involved. It is a very simple strategy. It's mm -hmm. about how do we get the ATMs to the next level. ATMs, I'm talking about agro-industry, tourism development, mineral development, including oil and gas, mm. and then STI, the knowledge economy. And uh, in there, there are certain things we are saying we are going to do differently. And that strategy is coming. Uh, we are going to be discussing it here on this table and okay. so many others uh, in, the coming, in the coming days and months and years. You know, every time you talk about growing the economy, very ambitious, good strategies, but one of the biggest detriments that every Ugandan will complain about, and which you've also talked about, is the cost of public administration, mm. which remains very huge for mm. us, that you are paying politicians mm. a lot of money mm. at the expense of Ugandans who are contributing actually this money. And the last time when you <coughs> said not only agencies need to be rationalized, but the entire government, is government even thinking about such? Mm. Definitely. In this very budget, <laughs> we've rationalized some of this money. We have moved the money from areas of uh, consumption. We have uh, almost, uh, uh, as you, you will see, we have cut a lot of, uh, not cut, repurposed. We have repurposed a lot of these things by 50% and moved the money to areas uh, where it's going to create value. We have actually done about five key policy changes in the and coming that? budget. Mm. The number one is on uh, reducing commercial borrowing for, for financing the budget. Um, we are going to reduce 
borrowing for the budget and only maintain and slightly increase borrowing for particular projects. Because we have been borrowing money, put it in the budget commercially, and uh, mm. it doesn't make economic sense. So we have, have cut that. And it will help us to manage our debt uh, cost, servicing cost. The number two, in this very budget, we've enhanced revenue collection, which we have just discussed. Mm. We will say number of things. Digitization. Mm. Number three, we are saying we are going to prioritize now completion of ongoing projects instead of bringing new projects on board. So there will be very few new projects. The emphasis is going to be put on completing what we start because we have so many projects what are some of those which are halfway. What are some of those that are priority for now? The priority projects, and these are the ones we are going now to give new money in the budget, mm -hmm. SGR. Okay. The standard gauge railway is going to start this financial year, this coming financial year. Negotiation is uh, at the tail end, as I told you last time. Um, we are also prioritizing the oil and the gas related projects. And in that, we are talking of the two remaining oil roads. We are going to complete them. We are talking about the refinery. We are going also to, uh, to start the refinery. We are talking about completing the hiccup, the, 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 f the one South for African crude oil. oil. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, there, they are their top priorities. We are also prioritizing tourism roads. For tourism roads, we're going to make about two or three of them. In the north, Chidepo, uh, Kitigumuki Depot Road, and then the, the circuit around the Buindi, impenetrable forest. And also, we are prioritizing Kampala roads. The roads within Kampala here, they are going to be a big priority. Those are the key new things we will see in the budget. When the rest are finishing the business we've been doing. When you talk about oil and gas, there is a conversation with regard to the Kabalega International Airport. Oh, yes. What course? We're going to action? complete it this year. Aren't we behind schedule? No. It is on, se on, on schedule. Okay. Yeah. We just uh, had a, a little challenge after uh, or during COVID, mm -hmm. but we have since uh, overcome it. So by the time we get oil, the first oil next year, 2025, Kabalega Airport will be. Uh, you need to get uh, these cameras and you go and you see. <laughs> what we is actually happening. have our teams on the ground. Uh -huh. What is happening there? Hmm. Uh, the, the, the airport is now almost, they have just very few technical things to fix. And, uh, and we complete it's at almost 90% completion. The other policy change we are making, um, we are going to fully implement the recommendations of the Auditor General on the payroll. Mm -hmm. Auditor General made strict recommendations. Those accounting officers who are creating ghosts, they are out. Those who are overpaying people, they are out. We are going to ensure that the wage bill now is exactly what is required. No shortfalls anymore on the wage. And uh, this is a fundamental. How does a Ugandan trust report. you on that? Because I agree with the ad, um, Auditor General, but this comes or these recommendations came at a time when we had even had a census. For example, of pensioners, we had had a census, a headcount literally of civil servants, and we still get the so uh, shortfalls. Who is sleeping on the job? No. The as I've told you, they have just recommended, we are now implementing. They mm -hmm. did a payroll audit on a salary. Mm -hmm. They are now starting a, 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 a payroll audit on a pension and a gratuity. They are going also to count all the pensioners. All of those wonderful Ugandans who have served this country in the past and have been uh, suffering, not getting their pension. Or this is now the opportunity for us to rectify that also.
Hmm. For those who are working now, I want to assure them that we have now established where the gaps were. In some areas, they were overpaying. In other areas, they were underpaying. In some areas, they were over budgeting. In other areas, they were under budgeting. Hmm. Those who were square responsible, they are going really to account, including the human resource personnel, those officers of human resource management who are supposed to do this job. I know the buck stops with the accounting officer, but sometimes the accounting officer is being let down by these other officers. Some of them are actually our own officers, accountants in these institutions, mm. the, 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 the finance people working <coughs> with, the, with, the, with the, the human resource personnel. Those are the ones we are going to, to be now uh, managing. In other words, going forward, we are going to sort out that aspect as well. Then those consumptive areas, we have also now repurposed them much more. Workshops, uh, travels, uh, cars, buying these vehicles. I told you here on this TV that mm. we are not buying cars. A week later, Parliament was parading cars of former people. I told the Parliament, you know it's a statutory institution, and I we respect them so much. And they said they will not do that again. You actually were rattling with Parliament the last time you um, you were before. I was doing what? Uh, you rattled with Parliament and what said they were what usurping. What does that <laughs> word mean? You, you said Parliament is usurping the executive powers. What did you mean? No, what I meant here is not actually usurping. I don't know that where that word came from. You know, you journalists, you pick words. I said that Parliament... By the way, I Parliament is a very powerful institution. Its job is to appropriate the budget. And in appropriation, Parliament is very powerful. It can tell government, don't spend money here. Mm. We recommend that you spend money there. What you are they it? doing that they're not supposed but to? But now, some time, um, uh, for, for, for quite a long time now, there has been a conversation on why Parliament cut money and move it to another area. That is a responsibility of government to budget. Theirs is meant to be to recommendation. Recommend. <coughs> Actually, they can refuse that we shall not appropriate this budget until you move this money from here to there. But not to move it and, and take it to some areas. That, 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 that's all I was, uh, I was referring to. But we have since uh, uh, agreed with uh, the leadership of parliament okay. on the MEDAS operandi, how we are going to work in a more consultative manner. And uh, my minister of finance and uh, the president of this country, they, they, they agree. Because, you know, for us, we are servants mm. of, 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 of this state. I'm a, I'm a civil servant and I'm a public servant. The politician is in the parliament, in the cabinet, in the, in the local governments, and then the, 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 the judiciary. They are the owners of the, of the country. They are the representatives of the people, and then the lords. Uh, the, and they are and, and the ones to decide on the priorities. Once they have decided on the priorities, I implement them. Okay. Now, in the course of implementing them, if you, you start now moving money from a certain priority, because you think it's not a priority mm. anymore <coughs> in the in appropriate, then it becomes, it becomes a problem. That's all we are, we are having a conversation on. I see the heavy heart that you would have with that, but still with regard to the budget. Mm. Rationalization has been the song for a while, but do you have the monies for the affected persons? Are they reflected in the forthcoming budget? How can I reflect money on speculation? Until, you know, you see government, Government does not budget in anticipation. Let them put the law in place, and then we, we budget for it. Because now, actually, Parliament will ask, so who are you to start allocating money mm. to something which we haven't taken a decision on, haven't allowed you to? Under which law are you budgeting for this? So for now, to Ugandans, it's still just a conversation. It's not a conversation. It's a policy-making process. Cabinet approved a policy to rationalize. Mm. 
parliament is going to legislate on it and approve it. After approval, we shall budget okay. for those monies. You can't fail. You know, a state, a government of Uganda cannot fail to pay people their severance and all other benefits which they are supposed to get. They will pay that. As we talk about economic growth, one aspect that remains very key is the domestic debt, paying suppliers of government. To how much have we been able to reduce that? Because then if Mildred supplied coffee siblings, it means if you get to pay me back, I am going to plow back the same money into the same business or other ventures. Mm. Are we settling up with our domestic debt? We are paying. The, the real suppliers now demand government around 384 billion shillings. Leave what alone these numbers you hear of trillions mm. that these are domestic areas. Those are other things, including money we are supposed to pay in court awards, but some of those uh, court cases are still under uh, certain uh, conversations. It includes money we are supposed to pay uh, uh, to to central bank, including money we are supposed to pay for <coughs> for Congo, mm. the, the DR Congo, and so on and so forth. So um, when you, you hear that uh, there are trillions of shillings, please, the money which we owe is about 384 billion for actual suppliers, which we haven't paid. Mm. We are going to try our level best to pay these people because we are, we are constrained, but we, we also know what that would mean if you paid uh, people. But also I've been having an issue on the people who supply government without in other words, without following the due process. Sometimes that's why we create these unnecessary areas. How do you, you mean? You don't have a call of order and you supply government. And how does government receive goods the from accounting without? Accounting officers. That's why I'm going to be really so mad with my accounting officers. Accounting officers committing government, they don't have the money. Because we tell them, for you to procure, you must have the money in the budget. Mm. And that money has been warranted. Then you go and procure. But you see, gov you, you, have an, you know in the government they have those things, unfunded priorities. <laughs> and then you go and you get people's goods. You find someone that, I got hotel services, I need now a supplementary. How? Was he sleeping in a hotel, uh, an emergency? Mm. <laughs> or carrying out a workshop in a hotel, an emergency? And those are the people you'll find, they haven't paid the poor hotel man. But that hotel man also <laughs> should first establish, there is what <coughs> called a call of order. Did this person have money? Of course you want business. But yeah, you in this business you will start down. looking at that. There are 10 hotels and uh, Ram Hotel is saying, do you have a call of order? And they will move on to Mildred Hotel. The other Hotel. day I, found, I met media. And you media people were telling me some of these uh, accounting officers of yours are not paying us. I told you the money we have in the budget for media, for communication. Mm. The money is there in the budget, but people we are not paying. And uh, now they had created some of them areas. Even some media houses demand money from uh, some government. of those accounting officers. Mm. By the way, you should stop saying you are demanding money from government. <laughs> Especially when you, government are, still. when you are getting these services in a manner which is not uh, legitimate. Mm. Legitimate are what I... What there what is no what call of order There is no yeah. due process. For me, I would want people who have uh, really gotten the deep, and, the, and the, I want to tell you Mildred, honestly, we try our level best to pay those people. Okay. Even in this very budget we are presenting, there is money for them. In most cases, um, uh, domestic areas, I pay usually 200, 300% over and above the budgeted. Okay. We try to create money for them. A thorn in the foot of many Ugandans is the conversation with regard to Lovoa hospital. Mm. 
that government has committed money, we issued a promissory note, there's money that has gone and not <coughs> any work has been done, mm. including parliament visits and them being uh, blocked. What do you have to say about this because... As a Minister of Finance, we really provided the resources for the hospital. The Minister of Health is working with the contractor to build the hospital. The latest report I have, and I think the speaker also communicated it, is that construction has resumed now. They are, there were a cocktail of issues with that hospital. Mm. From the way, uh, from the day it was conceived, to how it faced a number of shocks, uh, including COVID and, the, and also the, 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 the weather. And then to, control, to the conflicts amongst the contractor and, and the, and the uh, subcontractors, pushing out some of the subcontractors. But now, the latest report I have is that there's a new contract on site Mm. And uh, the work is ongoing. They have resumed the work. We are yet to to confirm that. We shall confirm. Mm. And uh, and definitely you will see the results at the end of the day. Who pays for the delays? Because at every project, mm. there is always a time frame mm. where you do expect at this time, we're putting in this money, this mm. time it should be working. This is the period that um, the investor will take with ownership and then revert it to government. Who pays for that? The lab? investor will pay for the delays. Okay. Yeah. That's on record. And we will definitely <laughs> be able to uh, bring it back to you. Our time is really fast spent, but one key aspect that I wouldn't want you to leave without talking about, you talked about reducing the fiscal space or a conversation about fiscal consolidation mm. that you've talked about for a very long time. Elaborate it to a Ugandan who is watching and what exactly we intend to achieve. Three things. Simple. Increasing the revenue. Ugandans, whatever conversations we are in, we shall not uh, get a solutionary way forward if we don't collect enough tax revenue. We should pay our taxes, we should get our revenue enhanced, and then that will bring in more relief on the borrowing. And then number two is reducing borrowing. And number three is cutting government expenditure or managing it, controlling it. Hmm. And those three things, they are in that budget proposal we are taking to Parliament. Okay. So we are deeply in the middle of fiscal consolidation, and we are doing it. All right. Your final message to the person who is watching when the economy is not doing well uh, with them, what message I would you I want to them? assure Ugandans, my good friend uh, Mildred, that this economy of Uganda is among a few economies that have kept they are fundamentals stable. By fundamentals we mean, is the economy growing? Yes. For us, we haven't just recovered, we have grown. Is the inflation stable? Yes, we have stabilized the inflation. Is the, are the people able to earn incomes? Yes. Those who are in a value addition, those who are in wealth creation are earning income. Those who are in speculation, they are crying. Mm. So most Ugandans, please, ensure that you go into value addition, into wealth creation, into doing something which creates wealth. And uh, you will be able to tap into the opportunities available. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, for your time. And we'll definitely keep having you. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure as well to have your time. That's been the time we had for the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Mr. Ramadan Gobi. And we'll continue to, of course, get your questions answered on the economy. I am Mildred Tuhai. Say good morning. God bless you.